What's up guys, it's your boy Jay from JS Films. Now if you have some deep pockets and you're trying to spend some money on a new camera, Panasonic GH5S, you've come to the right place. Today I'm gonna to talk about some accessories you can get with the GH5S. Now I have some notes here so I don't forget anything. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the Metabone Speed Booster. And if you're a Canon shooter like me, I have Canon lenses. The GH5S is Micro Four Thirds mount, so I had to get a Metabone Speed Booster EF to Micro Four Thirds Speed Booster Ultra 0.71X. If you're not familiar with a Metabone Speed Booster, go ahead and check it out because not only that it makes your field of view wider, it lets you gain a little bit of stop as far as light goes. So check that out. I have the Metabones and I have this with the Sigma right here right now, but I am recording with a GH5S so I can't show you, but I use this a lot. So that's the first accessory you have to get if you're not a native Micro Four Thirds lens kind of guy. Now the second thing that you should grab for the GH5S is screen protector, the LCD screen protector. Now there's plenty of this online on Amazon, but just be careful because I messed up. I got the anti-glare one, but the problem with that one is it messes up your back screen as far as exposure goes. When I was using it outdoors, I could not gauge my exposure correctly because it adds a little bit of darkness to it. So if you are gonna get a screen protector, take a look at the clear one instead of an anti-glare or any other ones, just so that your exposure on the back of the LCD screen is as accurate as possible. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is memory card. Now. Back when I had the GH5, there's a company that was making memory cards for the cheap. It's called the Delkin Devices or something like that. I was able to grab a 128 gigabyte one for fairly cheap, but now I believe they're discontinued. So your next best bet is the SanDisk Extreme Pro 300 megabytes per second write and read. I am probably gonna end up buying one of these just so I have an extra spare of memory card because you'll never know. Now, if you don't wanna spend that much money, just make sure that you get at least a V60, or that's, it stands for v Video 60 memory card, or at least a V90 memory card so that you're not gonna have dropped frame rates with a GH5S because the GH5S shoots 400 megabits per second and 4K. All right, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is this little thing right here, that small rig sunshade on the back of the LCD. This is a really great idea, especially if you're if you're somewhere where there's a lot of beaches or something like that, like Florida or California, and when it's bright outside. And here in Europe, we don't really need this because it's not that bright outside. It's mostly cloudy. But if you're shooting somewhere sunny, go ahead and get this. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is something that I have been itching to get, and that is an external monitor slash recorder. So the GH5S can record 8-bit 60 frames per second 4K. But if you get something like the Ninja Inferno, the GH5S can output 10-bit 60 frames per second at 4K. That pretty much makes the GH5S a different breed of camera because it adds that capability. And it also records to more edit-friendly formats like ProRes and DNX HDs. But the only thing that is pulling me back from getting the Ninja Inferno is just the size of it. I don't think they have a five inch version. They only have a seven inch version. So if I were to get it, it would just be too, it's just too big for my setup. I don't like having big bulky cameras. That's why I always opt for the small ones. And that's why I got rid of my Red Scarlet because it was just too big, too heavy. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna talk about is a cage for your GH5S. Again, small rig is your cheapest bet for this. They're, they make a really nice cage for the GH5 slash GH5S. So go ahead and check that out. I like small rig. I use all of their stuff. I use clamps and stuff from them. They're legit, but obviously if you want more expensive cages, you have to look somewhere else because the small rig is kind of like on the cheaper side of things. Now the last thing I am going to talk about is gimbals because that's part of me. That's part of the way I shoot. I use gimbals all the time. So there are plenty of options out there, but it depends on your weight, on the weight of your setup. So for me, I have a really heavy setup, so I had to go for the um, strongest at the time, which was the KMTV Profit, but I also got the Zion Crane 2. If you have a heavy lens, then you have to go for the Profit or the Crane 2 or the ICAN, which is 
it, I think it's supposed to support like eight pounds. That's gonna come out later on. And I think the DJI Ronin S is also another good option. That's pretty much all I got for you guys today. And as you can see, that's pretty bare minimum accessories. I don't like having a lot of bulky stuff with my setup. It's just because the way I shoot when I do travel stuff, I wanna be able to fit it in a small bag and carry it around all day. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.